Hey guys, Abner Miranda here. As you guys know, I make notations in my phone from time to time. And today's notation is actually two notations. The PDW needs to be reactive in nature and comfortable enough for you to snap it up to your eye and get your shot off rather than having to find the safe and or comfortable shooting position. That's the first one. The second one that's right underneath it says, rifles are point and shoot weapons Handguns require considerable skill to shoot well. However, put a stock or a brace on a handgun and you have now turned it into a point and shoot weapon. Okay, it's no surprise that I like this setup right here. I've done several videos on this. I call this the GS-17, mostly because I just needed to come up with a name for it. It is the Fab Defense GLR-17 Glock stock and the Fab Defense FGGK vertical grip and it's actually a safety. Um, they are, I will tell you this now because I kind of stumble on it purely by chance by doing some research. Um, Fab Defense is working on a angled forward grip that locks out to that position right there. Now for those of you that don't understand what that means is you can have your safety and then it would lock in this position which means that this would then become a legal option if you have a brace on your handgun but you don't have um, a safety for it. Read between the lines, I'll leave it at that because I'm working on something for you guys. When I saw that I sent that to my contact at ZFI and I said research this if you would please with ZFI because they are, I'm sorry with Fab Defense because ZFI is the uh, licensed importer um, for this stuff here in the United States. So I was like, I need that, I need that. You don't realize how big that is here, I need that. So anyways, this right here is such a viable option. Every time that we've seen these here in the US, it's always been as a range toy. And I wanna make sure that we see these things as what they are. They're PDWs. This is a personal defensive weapon. This is nine millimeter, 21 rounds, fuels off the same mags that my concealed carry handgun does. Now the only mag that it won't, the only mag that will not fuel, that will not feed here is of course the 15 rounder in my Glock 19 because this is a 17. But remember, there is a Glock 19 version of this. Aha! Uh -huh. And yes, for those of you that are gonna say this because there's always one of you that always says it, yes, this is a short barreled rifle. It's registered with the NFA as an SBR. I will say this to you. The NFA is going before the courts in October. If the NFA is struck down, boom, it's on. If the NFA is not struck down, it's still irrelevant. No, I'm not saying to backdoor them and do it anyways. What I'm saying to you is, and it pains me to say this, if America keeps going the way that we're going, the rule of law is gonna go out the window. And when that day comes, you may wanna already have this in your possession. So, you know what? Buy it and keep it at your brother's house. Buy it and keep it at work where your handgun isn't, okay? That's all I'm saying. Have this for when it becomes an option, whether it becomes a legal option or whether it becomes, it has all gone to hell in a handbasket option, but have it for when it becomes an option. When you transform a handgun into a PDW, the criteria that I look for, remember guys, I've been doing this for a decade. Since before, this was considered cool to do, I've been doing this. Since before, the industry started going, ooh, PDWs are a good idea, right? I was already doing this. I was already trying to figure out how best to make this stuff work. And I kept circling back around to this setup right here. I, I started here without an RMR, because back then RMRs were very expensive to put on handguns. So all I was running was, uh, was just Glock sights. So I tried this, it was decent within very reasonable distances. I'll see if I can dig up some of that really old video and you'll actually tell just by looking at me that I look different back then. Like I said, that's literally a decade ago. So um, I ran some drills, it worked. Within these types of distances, I could move, I could shoot, I could hit, it was working well. But I kept finding that there was this inherent inaccuracy in the setup that was really bugging me because handgun sights, which is what I was what I was relegated to, handgun sights are meant to be viewed at this distance versus this distance. And yes, 
This can be shot collapsed or it can be shot open. Either way, it's not going to hit you in cycle. So I kept going, well, you know, I want more accuracy. So I kind of put this aside and I went to the KPOS, uh, now known as KPOS G1. Ran it, loved it. Um, did the KPOS G2, which was honestly big and clunky. Um, then the Ronnie came out. Um, and with the Ronnie, I actually received a sample and I distinctly remember where I was sitting in my patrol car, running radar, and was on the phone with the rep for Command Arms Accessories when I told him the Ronnie isn't running. Uh, he says, what are you running it on? I said, a, uh, a 40 cal Glock 20, uh, Glock 22. It's not running. And I said to him, the recoil impulse is causing malfunctions. And long story short, I said to him, where was it, where was it developed? He says, well, it's, it's from Israel. And I go, well, that's, yeah, they run 17s. They don't really run 22s there, they run 17s. Well, apparently the, the Ronnie then had gone to the Secret Service. So I helped them figure out some issues with that thing. I boldly say these things now because I'm so tired of sugarcoating things in this industry and I'm so tired of people taking the advice that I give them, making products better, and then saying nothing. Saying nothing to pay me the credit of saying Abner really knows his stuff. He really is very intuitive into how these things work. So now that I am, you know, now that I've taken the gloves off, I'm going to be very bold about telling you guys, folks, I've been in this industry longer than most people who have come and gone. Um, longer than most people who are still in this industry. Uh, there are some, well, I'm not going to go there. Um, I've been doing this for a very long time, and I'm telling you that when I tell you that this type of thing is very viable, take that as gospel, because it is viable. This is not a range toy. This is legit. Uh, did the KPOS, did the Micro Ronnie, did the KPOS G2, the, I'm sorry, the, did the Ronnie, did the KPOS G2, the Micro Ronnie wasn't out yet. Um, kind of kept telling them, you need to turn this into a brace. And because they're Israeli companies, they're correct when they say, well, that's kind of stupid. Yeah, because <laughs> the NFA is, the NFA laws, I want to be clear, because with all honesty, the folks that I've dealt with at the NFA are perfectly pleasant people who are trying to do a very difficult job. Because guys, the NFA rules are really, really goofy. When I say the NFA, I mean the thing, the entity. The NFA is dumb. It is the dumbest, hey, let's find creative ways to get around more laws. Duh, that's what we do as Americans. So um, I said to, these, to the Israeli companies, Fab Defense, uh, then talking with Mako Group, which was kind of part of Fab Defense, um, contact, my contact at ZFI, I give them input on different things that I consider. And so anyways, I said, you ought to develop this as a braced item versus as an NFA only item because then you could sell a bazillion of them. So anyways, um, I kept consistently coming back around to this, right here, this exact setup. And I kept going, I know I'm, I know I'm onto something here, I just can't figure out why I'm the only one who's saying it. I mean, I know other people get this outside of the US, but in the US, who else is getting this? Not that many people. And I kept going, everything about this is ideal for the vehicle fight, for the CQC fight, you're talking about having to get around really tight corners and if I if if my option is a hallway that is this tight and I've got to get around this corner wouldn't it be nice to be able to get around this corner muzzle up versus getting around the corner with a rifle which is basically stock stock goes past your shoulder and you have to kind of like do that sort of thing if I hear something and I suspect there's someone there I can get around this corner like this I mean, look, I went right past, shaved right past that corner, muzzle up, got my shot off. Why? Because I'm dealing with a glorified handgun. If I'm talking about the long hallway down a meth trailer, which you don't want to be shooting inside if you can avoid, but if you have no choice, wah. Uh, which by the way, yeah, that's why this is here. You can suppress this. Um, if I'm dealing between a couple of cars, confined spaces, this is where this is. Well, guess what? What's the fight we're dealing with now? Actually, no, better yet, 
Why did the United States Army adopt this thing? Why? Because they realized they have a problem on their hands. And it's called CQC. They have to have better weapons. M4s are not good weapons for CQC. M4s are not good weapons for cars. I've done it. I've done a lot of training in and around vehicles with rifles. It's misery. No matter how you slice it, it's misery. Suppressed or unsuppressed, it's misery. I can shoot a handgun with a stock in a vehicle, suppressed and or unsuppressed, and it's not horrible. The other point is this. Uh, rifles are point and shoot weapons. Handguns require considerable skills to shoot well. However, put a stock or brace on a handgun and you have and you have now turned it into a point and shoot weapon. Okay. Um, you guys have heard me say that many times before. Long guns, which this qualifies as a long gun, are point and shoot weapons. What that means is the very fact that I have a stock and a forward point of contact on this weapon means that I'm controlling it at this end and I'm controlling it at this end. As opposed to a handgun that I'm only controlling here. The only, the only control point is, is actually the hinge point on a handgun. I mean, it swings in every direction, right? Because there's nothing here to stop it from going like this, or stop it from going like this, or stop it from going like this or like this. So the weak points on handguns have always been, um, for me to be very accurate with a handgun, I have to have a lot of practice with that handgun. Now take the PDW, one, two, three, four, five, elbow, six, elbow. This weapon isolates. Honestly, the biggest thing it needs to isolate is lateral movement, windage, windage movement. Elevation is not that big of an issue, but windage is a big, big issue with handguns because when you pull the trigger on a handgun, if you're a lefty, and you don't have good discipline, you're going to miss low and right. For righty, it's going to be low and left. And it's because of that trigger. The trigger finger tends to want to push the weapon. So I say to you, and I'm going to keep hitting this issue, <clears throat> you got to do this. You got to do this, whether you do this full on SBR and go this route, which honestly, this is like 99% right here. The reason I say that is, the reason I say 99% is someone may actually come up with something better than this. So I'm going to give them that one little, you know, little percentage, that one little section of percent. Um, the RMR machined into the slide lines it up visually with the muzzle. The point of aim versus point of impact is less than the, the thickness of a thumbnail, uh, the, the width of a thumbnail. And what that translates to, whether I'm here or whether I'm aiming at someone way over where that tree is standing, I can still hit them because I don't have to remember a, a, a massive mechanical offset, which is what you get with rifles. At best, here's your mechanical offset on a rifle, at best. At worst, they get up to like this. I, I, um, FN scar. Seriously? Dude, FN SCAR, mechanical offset, I mean, that's huge. Mechanical offset, for those of you that don't understand, is point of aim, point of impact, where you zeroed the weapon. As you move inside of that distance, you have to aim higher and higher and higher, which is why some tier one units train forehead, forehead, throat, throat. They aim here to hit here. They aim here to hit here. Forehead, forehead, throat, throat. Forehead, forehead, throat, throat. General Boykin, former Delta operator, former Delta commander, I believe, um, is, is quoted as saying in his book, Never Surrender, and Dynamite Read, you have to read that book, is quoted as saying when they were in the shoot house at Delta, their instructor, whose name I can't remember at the moment, would say to them, face shots are happiness. Literally, face shots are happiness. I'm fairly certain I could probably run this past Ken Hackathorn and he'd probably say, yeah, that was about right. Um, Ken is, I, I, I believe that what I am now doing, Ken, is I'm now entering that phase of life that you've already been at for a long time where you're like, don't really give a rat's ass whose toes I step on anymore. I have got to deliver truth, okay? You need to be shooting to put down the threat. 
you're not trying to decipher what what childhood issues they're struggling with at the moment you need to shoot to stop the threat period read between the lines on that all you want I need to shoot to stop the threat and I need to always assume that the bad guy is wearing body armor which is why I would rather go into a fight with a PDW that is not so much geared toward de defeating body armor because this can't really defeat body armor it can kind of wreck it efficiently but it can't really defeat it but I can get shots very neatly around the edges of body armor with a weapon like this if I decipher quickly that a bad guy is wearing armor I'm gonna start targeting other areas of his anatomy because I know I know where those weaknesses are I used to sell armor I know how to defeat armor oh things are about to get scary here at tier one citizen as always I thank you guys for watching God bless you all get those guns out and practice have a good one Oh, I ran out of ammo.